the power of personal excellence. The power of personal excellence. First, let me begin by making a statement. Excellence is not a gift. Please write that down. You are not born with excellence. Excellence is an attitude generated by a spirit. Excellence is an attitude generated by a spirit. All of you know, as you encounter the corporate world and the, the, the development in business for the 21st century, that every industry, including the one in my country that is now the leading ministry, ministry of tourism, uh, everyone is talking about quality control. Everybody's talking about management of quality control. And every company is trying to get the edge on quality because the market is so saturated with so many different types of products and types of services that the future is not, is not belonging to those who just produce products. It is no longer belonging to those who just supply service. The future belongs to those who have the edge on excellence in service or excellence in quality. That's the difference between success and mediocrity in the next century in business. So this organization, like any other company, must concentrate from the top down on excellence and quality rather than just products and service. Everybody is selling products. And everybody supplies a service. But only the few at the top supply quality service and excellence in products. Excellence is defined as, write this down, highest quality. Not just high quality, highest quality. Another word, superior standard. Superior standard. Thirdly, <laughs> extreme quality. Extreme quality. Excellence is not just quality. It goes to the extreme. And finally, excellence is defined as maximum quality. Maximum quality. So to work as a supervisor or manager or a leader or anyone else and to work less than excellent you are literally working below your true ability excellence will cost you what mediocrity will save you excellent people will conquer what average people will complain about is that true most of the people who don't get ahead in life don't because they're too busy complaining about why they can't get ahead in life. But an excellent person conquers the things average people complain about. Excellent people pursue solutions. Average people stare at problems. Write that down. That's good to tell your downline. <laughs> Excellent people pursue solutions. Average people stare at problems. Excellence orchestrates in the mind, translates into speech, and demonstrates in your life. I repeat, excellence originates 
and orchestrates in your mind. Then it translates in your speech and it demonstrates in your life. You don't have to ask a person if they are excellent. Have you noticed? You can tell by the way they dress. You can tell by the way they talk to you. You can tell by the way they organize what's around them. You can tell by the way they order their words when they speak. Excellence is not imposed from the outside. It is released from the inside. If you and I are going to be effective leaders, and if we're going to inspire people to be excellent, they are going to have to see it in our mindset, our demonstration of life, and in our speech. Excellent people make improvements, not excuses. Boy, that's a good thought. I'll repeat it for you. Excellent people make improvements, not excuses. We who are leaders of the other leaders that are on their way to becoming leaders like we are leaders, <laughs> we should encourage people to pursue solutions to their obstacles and their oppositions and their challenges rather than letting them give excuses. A leader competes only with himself and herself. A true leader never compares him or herself with anyone. A true leader competes with himself and herself. So here are the principles of excellence that every human should know. Number one. Don't settle for the average. Do not settle for the average. Average is the grave in which excellence is buried, isn't it? Average people strive to fit in while excellent people strive to stand out. You can never change what you accept. I repeat, you can never change what you accept. So don't settle for the average. You can never change what you refuse to confront. If you keep pretending that mediocrity is your best, then you will never proceed to excellence. You were not born to be an average person. This, therefore, is the challenge we need to inspire people to not settle even when they seem to be successful. As a matter of fact, the greatest enemy of progress is your last success. When you settle on what you've done and believe you've achieved everything, you have just begun to die. Excellent people never settle for the average. Number two, develop a deep commitment to excellence. You will never be excellent until you decide that this is the lifestyle you will have. Develop a deep commitment to excellence. First, you should be the best, then you will be first. <laughs> you missed that, huh? Write it down. First, you must be the best, then you will be first. Get it? You think you get it. In business, everybody's trying to be first in the market. But that's the wrong pursuit. Excellent people don't try to be first. They try to be excellent. Therefore, first, you should be the best then you'll be first. Michelangelo one day was painting the Sistine Chapel, and you all know the story of Michelangelo, the most awesome painting in Rome. People travel all over the world to see this man's painting, and 
You know what Michelangelo did, right? He lie on his back on a scaffold and he painted the entire ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. It's the most beautiful, awesome artwork in Rome. An awesome work. One day, the story goes, it's a true story, that Michelangelo was painting and one of his aides came in to check on him. When he walked into the chapel, there were candles everywhere. It was dark and musty. Michelangelo could not be seen. And so his friend and colleague cried out, Michael! He heard no sound. Michael, are you here? He heard some noise in the corner, in the dark, behind a post, up above the nave, in the secret corner where no one could see. Michael! And he heard a voice from way in the back, underneath the scaffold, behind the post, up above the ledge, in the dark corner of the chapel. And the answer came, yes, I'm busy. And the aide came and walked up and looked up in the darkness behind the post, way behind the rafters, and there's Michelangelo on his back with a painting brush in his teeth, one in his hand on his palette, and he is on his back painting the feathers of one of the little angels in the dark behind the post where no one will ever see. His colleague said, Michael, what are you doing up there? He said, I'm painting the ceiling. He said, but Michael, you are putting details on the feather on the wings of an angel in the dark behind the post above the nave beyond the rafters where no one will ever see it. Why waste your time? And without catching a breath, Michelangelo spoke through the brush in his teeth and said, but God sees it. He keeps on painting. What a spirit of excellence. An excellent spirit does not work because people are watching. It doesn't work because it will be known. Excellence comes from a spirit, an attitude on the inside. See, Michael was not working for the observation of people. He had an integrity with himself. He believed that everything he did should be the best he ever done, even if no one ever saw it. I think we should give Michael a hand for setting an example of excellence. That is why we cannot ignore Michael, because Michael was a man of excellence. Number three. Possess ethics and integrity. Number three, possess ethics and integrity. A person of excellence will always possess these two things, ethics and integrity. You see, your gift will carry you where your character won't keep you. <laughs> How many of you know the story of Joseph in the Bible? I think we read his story. How many of you know the story of Samson? Okay? I'm going to give you a test. This is a test of integrity. <laughs> Which one was stronger, Samson or Joseph? Joseph. Now, Samson had all the muscle. Samson had all the physical strength. Samson could pick the gate of the city on his back and take it to the hill. Samson killed a thousand men with his bare hands and a jawbone. Samson was so powerful, he broke a temple to pieces by his bare hands. The guy was a monster. But Joseph had no muscle, never killed a thousand men with his hands, never destroyed a temple with his arms. And yet Joseph was stronger than Samson. Why? Because morality is stronger 
than talent. We don't take advantage of people in our downline. We don't violate family. We don't violate marriage. We respect people's opinions. In other words, excellence has a commitment to ethics and high morality. We know in reality that morality is stronger than energy. Joseph was a greater man than Samson because you remember Pharaoh's wife who was married wanted Joseph to sleep with her. She came into the room when Joseph was coming out of the bath and she came in with nothing on. And Joseph only had a towel. <laughs> Samson met a woman with everything on. <laughs> and he could not control his desires. Joseph was so strong on the inside that the story says he dropped the towel and ran naked away from the woman. To me, that's a stronger man. We in this organization and in any company should commit ourselves to the strength of ethics and integrity above personal satisfaction and gratification. Ethics are moral standards grounded in principles that govern your beliefs and convictions. Ethics are mental attitudes based on beliefs that control your behavior. What you believe manifests how you behave. Integrity is integration of your words with your behavior. What you say and do are supposed to be consistent if you are a person of integrity. An excellent spirit is a spirit of what? Integrity. Integrity. Write this down, please. Integrity is the integration of your word and behavior. Integrity is the integration of your word and behavior. Excellence produces trust. Why? Because people watch what you say and to see if it equals what you do before they trust you. Leaders, true leaders, are people who cause others to trust them because they say what they mean and they mean what they say. If you're going to be a person of excellence in leadership, you must integrate your words with your actions. If you promise someone you're going to give them a call, give them the call. If you promise someone you're going to meet with their group, then do all in your power to show up and be at that meeting. If you promise someone that you will send them some products at a certain time, do all in your power to deliver on that promise. Why? Because excellence is integrity. What you say is what you do, and what you do is what you said. The word integrity is from the word integrate, which means to be one. What you say is exactly what you are. Credibility and character, then, are results of integrity. Number four, an excellent leader shows genuine respect for others. Show genuine respect for others. To respect means to honor, to esteem, to value highly, to place much worth on another. I'm going to repeat this again because you and I need to do this with those we work with. To respect means to honor, to esteem, to value highly, to place much worth on another. My question to you as a supervisor and a manager of your downline is this. What are people to you? To most companies, people are just employees. They are not separate, worthy humans. To most companies, people are just 
pawns in a big game that make it work. What are people to you? To others, people are just opportunities for me to use to get my life ahead. You see, listen carefully. What is your value of a human? And how do you see others? People know when you respect them and when you don't. So don't fake it. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Respect the worth and value of people. Excellence manifests itself in honoring people. Number five, go the second mile. Go the second mile. Excellence is manifested in people who are not afraid of doing their best. <laughs> Christians should go the second mile, but everybody should, but especially Christians. You see, responsibility is greater than rights. Write it down. It'll make sense after I'm gone. Responsibility is greater than rights. Give more than you take from life. Go the second mile. You know, how many people do you know they only do what you ask them to do? How many folks you know only do what they can get away with? How many of you as leaders only do what's expected of you and no more. You don't have a spirit of excellence. An excellent spirit always goes beyond the call of duty and beyond the assignment. An excellent spirit does not do just because you were told, but it does because it believes and it acts. Go the second mile for excellence. Number six, be consistent. Nothing is as frustrating as an inconsistent human. You know a few of them, don't you? You're probably sitting in their shoes right now. <laughs> an excellent person sets high standards for themselves. So I want to encourage you to write this down. I will set high standards for myself. Be consistent. People forget how fast you do a job, but never how good. True? People forget how fast you do a job, but never how good. Be consistent in your performance. Always do a job the best you can. Always manifest the excellency of your attitude in everything you do. Be consistent. A lot of people can be good for a moment, but a true leader is consistent all the time. Never ask God for something you are not willing to go after. Be consistent. Consistency attracts promotion. Another word for consistency is faithfulness. Faithfulness. You want to manifest faithfulness before those that you influence because you want them to be the same. Do you know, how many of you have ever had this experience? Someone said to you, I'm going to be for you at 5.15. And you suddenly was controlled by that promise to the point where you started rearranging your schedule and putting pressure on yourself to be there at 5.14 because of a reputation this person has developed with you which says they are always on time. In other words, their consistency begins to make you consistent. 
If you want the people in your downline to be faithful, then you're the key. If you want the people in your downline to always show up to meetings, then you shouldn't miss them. If you want the people in your downline to always be faithful to assignments, then when you expect to do something for them, then they should see that faithfulness in you. You see, consistency breeds consistency. Number seven. Never stop improving. Oh, this is a good one. Never stop improving. Excellence is a spirit that is never satisfied. Write it down. A person of excellence may be impressed by what they've done, but never satisfied with what they've done. They are constantly improving. Excellence is the gradual result of striving to be better. Excellence is constantly growing. If you grow, everything will get better. I repeat, if you grow, everything will get better. That's why a true leader is constantly developing coming to seminars, reading books, learning and self-learning and unlearning and relearning because a leader knows that if you grow, everything changes. You know, things in life don't change much. You do. Is that right? I mean... <laughs> Half of the things that you thought were problems 20 years ago, you look at them as opportunities now. Because you grew. Ignorance is the greatest enemy of man. Knowledge is his best friend. So the less you know, the more you are confused about life. The more you learn, the more simple life becomes. A true, excellent leader is always growing because he knows everything will get better as he grows. So take responsibility for your own improvement and tell your people that. You can't babysit leaders, you inspire leaders. And if you want others to become leaders like you, then you must encourage them to take responsibility for their own development. Uh, let me say one thing that I believe is gonna be the secret to 21st century management. Write this down. Good leaders manage people and develop systems. Great leaders develop people and manage systems. Now look at the difference. Do you see it? Which one are you? You got to answer that question yourself. For the last 800 years, and recently the last 500 years, as we expanded into the Industrial Revolution, you will note that the majority of management systems and philosophies in the world, including big business, has been to manage people and develop resources. What a pity. The greatest resource you have is the people. So true leaders develop people. Other leaders manage people. When you stop learning, you start losing. When you stop learning, you start losing. When you stop growing, you start dying. Number eight. Oh, this one is good. Always give 100%. An excellent spirit 
always gives 100%. Life, look at me, is made up of four kinds of people. I think you met them before. Number one, cop-outs. Two, holdouts. Three, dropouts. <laughs> and four, all outs. <laughs> a cop out is a person who says it's impossible, so I won't even try, I won't even join, I won't even attempt. The holdouts are those who are only in it to make use of your time, but have no interest or commitment in improving or doing any better. They're just holding out. They're the ones that consume your energy without profit. The third one are the dropouts. A dropout is a person who started with zeal, excitement, you know them. Oh, this is great. Man, I've never seen them. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. Oh, yes, sir. I'm going to go with this. Oh, we're going to be excited. We're going to be rich, 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 rich. Tomorrow. You know them. All outs. Pay the price to reach the goal. Excellent people are more concerned with getting ahead rather than getting home. Most of the people that are employed on jobs wait for five o'clock. They live for lunch times. But a real, true, excellent spirit has a spirit of paying the price for the goal. They work not to get home, but they work to build a home. And there's a difference. They go beyond the call of duty into personal pride. Wow, I like that. An excellent person goes beyond the call of duty into the realm of personal pride. They say, I'm doing this because this represents me. When they do a job, they do it because there's a sense of personal pride involved, not working for someone else. That's a spirit of excellence. They see their work as their signature. That's a good thing to note. An excellent spirit sees its work as its signature. If you are ashamed of what you've done, then no one else should see it. If you are ashamed of what you have accomplished, then no one else should see it. Everything you do should be your signature. As a matter of fact, your life should be so excellent that whenever people walk past something you did, they can always say, I know who did that. Just by the way it is done, it's your signature. Number nine, make excellence a lifestyle. We got one more after this and then we take a break. Number nine, make excellence a lifestyle. Everybody say lifestyle. Come on, leaders, say lifestyle. Come on, lions, say lifestyle. Let the eagle say lifestyle. That's important. Excellence must be a lifestyle. What does that mean? Do it right the first time all the time. Mediocrity is a personal trait. Excellence is a choice like attitude. You choose to be excellent. People will see you before they hear you. <laughs> so look good to yourself. How many of you ever put on a suit or a dress or a pantsuit or, I mean, and you just knew you looked good? Anybody ever felt that way? Of course you did. Don't look so shy. 
I mean, there's some clothing that just look good on you. Now, there's some you wear, you kind of put up with them, you know, and uh, you don't feel too good. But there are certain things that you put on, they just look good. And what do you do? You can't wait to go out. <laughs> Matter of fact, that's the one day you are very conspicuous. Hello, hi, hello, everybody. Hey, how you doing, girl? Good to see you, brother. Right on, hey, hi. Why? You just know. You look good. <laughs> clap. That's a good place to clap. You know it's true. Why? Because the excellent spirit is upon you. You see, people will see you be before they hear you. So when you look good to yourself, you're proud to talk. An excellent spirit is a spirit that's a lifestyle. It always looks good, feels good, works good. I have a, a principal in our company, and we have a staff of over 52 full-time workers who work in our office, and another staff of 267 volunteer workers that work with me. So we got a staff of over 300 people, and there's a law that we have throughout the whole office ever since we started the company. It's a personal, original statement that I came up with for my own life, and I taught it to my whole staff and the leaders in our whole country, and our whole uh, uh, company. And it's this. If you can't do it right, don't do it yet. I want to encourage you to adopt that attitude in your life and in your business and in your work. Say it with me. If you can't do it good, if you can't do it right, say it. If you can't do it right, don't do it yet. Say it. Don't do it yet. That's the attitude of excellence. Why? Because you only have one time to make a lasting impression. When you go to present your program to a group of people, put on your best clothes and put on your best cologne and perfume and, and fix your hair the best you can and walk in there with your best walk and give them your best stand and, and talk with your best articulation and impact them with your best breath. Why? You only got one time to make a lasting impression. Every time a man sells diamonds and he ain't wearing none, you better doubt the diamonds. If a man's selling fish, he don't eat fish. You better doubt the fish in the market. If we are going to become leaders that inspire people to become leaders, then we have to look like leaders, act like leaders, even relate to each other as leaders so they can see how we relate at our level, so they can be inspired to do the same at their level. We are the manifestation of our own lifestyle of excellence. Your appearance is the platform for your presentation. So be excellent in your physical appearance. I want to give you a challenge, a simple one. Here's your homework until I see you again. Study class. <laughs> simple assignment. Study class. Spend the rest of your life studying what is class. Hopefully, first class. Even if you ain't there yet, study it. Because whatever you study, you begin to think. And whatever you think, you become. Because as a man think it, so is he. If you don't think excellence, you cannot be excellent. Remember, write this down, quality is never an accident. Your house is not beautiful by mistake. Your room is not cleaned, but you didn't intend for it to look so. <laughs> quality is not an accident. It's a decision and a result of hard work. And finally, excellent spirits 
Never compare yourself with others, but with yourself. Take that to your downline, but begin it in your own life first. I repeat, never compare yourself with others, only with yourself. People of excellence never look at what other people are doing and use it as a measure for their success. Excellence, write this down, is competition with yourself. Excellence is competing with what you did last to see if you can do it better. Excellence is striving to complete what your mind says you know you could do better. Excellence is self competition, not other competition. Striving to outdo yourself is excellence. Celebrate what makes you an individual. You were born an original, remember? So don't become a copy of someone else's mediocrity. Look at people, but don't let them, them make you what they are. Some of you have accomplished a certain level of success in this business, but I'm warning you, don't ever become so impressed by what you've accomplished that you cease striving to accomplish what you could. Compete with yourself. Attitude, standard, state of mind is the secret to life. Excellence is a spirit that produces an attitude that results in a way of thinking that manifests in a way of life. Finally, to be yourself and to become yourself is the essence of life. To help others discover themselves and release themselves is the essence of living. You have life and you give life when you create leaders around you.